This is the Technics SUV50 stereo amplifier. I don't know much about it other than it doesn't work, but it seems to be a pretty basic amplifier. You take a look at the back. And there is one nice feature here. It's the impedance selector. So depending on the impedance of your speakers and how many you intend to connect, you can choose low impedance mode and high impedance mode. So I'm guessing it adjusts the power amplifier circuit to make sure that it delivers maximum power regardless of your speaker impedance. And that's nice in that case because that means you don't have to have the lowest impedance speakers to achieve maximum output power, as is often the case. One thing I don't like is that they use these stupid flimsy speaker terminals which feels like you're going to break them just by using them. And you will. Yeah, here we go. It does turn on. Let's connect the speakers. Okay, so it seems that the protection circuit trips every now and then. That can be pretty tricky to find. Let's have a look inside. So here's one thing that stands out. This is the power amplifier. It's an integrated circuit. Now luckily this amplifier I see is working, otherwise I'm suspecting it would be quite expensive to replace it, if it was possible to find one at all. It's using the same cooling concept as the Luxman M120A that we looked at in a previous video. The heat is carried from the power transistors, or in this case the power IC, using this copper rod to the heatsink. Okay, so now we're looking for the protection circuit. And as I see it, there are two main scenarios here. One, there's something wrong with the protection circuit that causes it to trip even though there's nothing wrong. Or two, there's something else in this unit that is failing and the protection circuit is just doing its job. So the service manual seems to be nicely written, which is helpful. So here we have a block diagram of the amplifier that we can start with. Here we have the audio inputs and the selector. And here we have the signal processing such as treble and bass. Here we have the pre-amplifier, here we have the power amplifier, and here we have something that is called muting and protection, which I assume is what we're looking for. Okay, so one thing that worries me a bit is that this seems to be an integrated circuit, which means that if this is broken, it might be hard to find a replacement. So this is the control circuit that controls the relay, and it's the relay that shuts off the output every now and then. So this seems like a good place to start. It's labeled IC601. So let's take a look in the actual schematic. So here we have IC601. It's the AN7073. One thing I really like with this schematic though is that there is a block diagram inside this IC component. So you can actually see what the pins go to without having to look up in the datasheet. That's very nice to see. I wish it was more common to do that. Something that's even more valuable right now is that they've written out the voltage values on each pin. So we can start by measuring these voltages and see if there's something else that's wrong outside the circuit. So here we have the IC in question. We'll start by measuring on pin number 1, which goes to a block that is labeled DC detection, and it's supposed to be 0 volts. So I'm assuming that if the voltage deviates from 0 volt on that pin, it will trip the protection circuit. The DC voltage seems to be correct still, 0 volts. Okay, let's measure pin 2 that is labeled AC detection. So we'll switch to AC. Let's continue. So now I'm measuring the pin on the protection circuit that is supposed to toggle the relay. And it's minus 14.9 volt, which should indicate that the relay should be on. So maybe there's something wrong with the toggling electronics for the relay, rather than the control circuit itself. Let's measure directly over the relay. Now we're measuring the voltage over the relay, and it's 27 volts. The relay should definitely be on right now. Hmm, the 
There seems to be some missed connection. So here we have the relay, way down there. So you can't remove the bottom plate on this one, which means that we have to disassemble the entire unit, more or less, to get to the relay. Well, let's do that. These connectors are really annoying to disconnect. It's almost like picking a lock or something. You have to apply tension to the cable while you're picking each pin in the correct order because you're only applying tension to one of the cables at a time. I wonder if there's an easy way to disengage this cable. According to the instructions, you should be able to pull it just straight up. Let's give it a go. Ah. Okay, let's have a look on the bottom side. So here's the relay that's been acting up. Let's remove it from the PCB and test it standalone. Here's the relay. So these are the terminals for the coil. So when we apply 24 volts DC across this coil, we should close this terminal to this, and this terminal to this. So let's see if it works. First one seemed to work. Another one too. Yep, seems to be nothing wrong with this relay. So in case it was just a cracked solder joint, let's do a long time test for about half an hour and see if we get any disruptions this time. So now it's been playing for half an hour without any disruption, so I'm pretty sure it was just a cracked solder joint on the relay. Okay, so the relay problem seems to be solved. Now we have to do something about this broken speaker terminal. Here we have it, a terrible design implemented with cheap brittle plastic. Okay, now it's hopefully dried. Let's take a look at it. Let's hope the moving pieces are still moving.
this one seems to work this one seems to be stuck all right we broke it again Okay, let's see if it's good this time. Okay, let's put it back together and test it. Okay, hey, let's test it out. Let's test the newly repaired speaker terminals. Okay, the speaker terminal seems to work and the protection circuit is not tripping anymore. In conclusion, this is a relatively low end amplifier of the 80s and as I understand it was relatively cheap when it came out. It seems like the design is quite decent for what it is but the build quality is lacking and that becomes apparent when you try to repair it. We had to disassemble a quite large part of the amplifier to get to the relay and in some places they use these tricky connectors that's a bit of a hassle to get off. And it's also apparent they've used relatively low quality materials when producing this. Most notably these connectors that are subject to quite a lot of stress during use. And this whole terminal assembly was just cracked everywhere, so it will probably break again. This was just not made for a lot of use and it's not made to last. Another thing that can make this hard to repair is that they've used quite a lot of specialized integrated circuits. And of course these negative aspects are not there by accident, they're there to save production cost. And it would be unfair to compare it to a high-end amplifier that was much more expensive. 